some time to learn the jam. So a couple of times, he's uh, trying to better his uh, and that's not rather than power. Out combinations. That's the way here in, in this round or next. Because... Let your attention please. Just a few days away, a few days ago, one of the all-time greats from the world of boxing passed away. His record as a member of the International Boxing Hall of Fame, 55 victories, including 40 big wins by knockout. At 126 pounds, he was so sweet, they called him Sugar. Please remain silent as we toll a memorial count of 10 for the former featherweight champion of the world, the legendary Otomino Sugar Ramos. Rest in peace, champion. So the tail of the tape now for our next televised fight. Now the Inoue against Antonio Nieves, and you can see the six-year age advantage for young Inoue, who is regarded as one of the true rising phenomenons of the sport. He's got a half-inch height advantage over Nieves. He's got an arm-length advantage of a half-inch measured from the armpit to the end of the fist. He weighed in one and a quarter pounds heavier than Nieves, even though Nieves has never fought down here at this 115 pound level. has fought as high as up in the 120s is by nature, he thinks, the heavier man. But overnight, they rehydrate and anyway, will enter the ring with a five pound weight advantage unofficially on our unofficial HBO scale over Antonio Nieves. Here comes Antonio Nieves, Cleveland, Ohio product, Puerto Rican roots. Don't know yet whether he's heard about his relatives in Puerto Rico and how they handled the difficulties of Prop the Storm Irma. Uh, he started out in mixed martial arts, Andre Ward, because he loved the idea of competing and wanted to be in mixed martial arts, ultimately made the switch to boxing, and that's what brings him here. He caught, he caught his first loss of his career in his last fight, 17 wins, one loss, two draws. We'll be looking to come up with a giant upset here tonight. Yeah, he's come. He's come from Cleveland, Ohio. Um, you know, it's, it's a great amateur background, and he seems to be ready. I mean, I didn't quite understand how he was going to pull this off tonight when we talked to him in the fighter meeting, but he said he was ready, and he, he actually said he would be willing to die in the ring to get this victory tonight, so hopefully nothing like that happens. He's going to have to elevate his game beyond where it's been so far as a pro. He's a very competent boxer, but, but in a way is a special kind of talent. And he is going to have to, Nieves is going to have to fight better than he has fought in the past to pull this off. Much better. There he is. Now he, in a way, became a major player in boxing circles by capturing a title in two weight divisions by his eighth pro bout. He's kind of the Asian Vasily Lomachenko in that regard. We sat down with the 24-year-old with the vicious left hook a few days ago to find out more about how he got his start in the sport as a boy growing up in Japan. I'm from Zama City, Hanagawa Prefecture, Japan. I started when I was in the first grade, and, and I got started in boxing because of the influence from my father. He took me to the gym every day. He fought in the amateurs just to fight. My trainer is my father. We understand each other and the way we feel, and that connection is the best part of having him as a trainer. My nickname is Monster. In the ring, it's all business. I'm there to knock the other guy out. If I leave a great result, that is going to leave a great image for the boxing fans all over the world. Max Kellerman, two weeks ago, we watched Yoshihiro Kamagai of Japan absorb unbelievable punishment over 12 rounds from veteran Miguel Cotto. Kamagai was one of a wave of boxers who made their mark for Japan over the course of the last decade. Now, here comes the guy who some believe be one of the greatest ever in Japan's glorious boxing history. Well, you know, I mean, fighting Harada, 112-pound champion, moves up and beats Edder Joffrey for Joffrey's only loss of his, uh, of his career at the time. They were calling Joffrey the next Sugar Ray Robinson. 
and uh, so he has a lot to, to, to be better than, but he is a special talent. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the official introductions. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the StubHub Center, Carson, California, the super flyweight action continues. This contest brought to you by K2 Promotions in association with Ohashi Promotions and Salita Promotions. Sponsored by Tecate, Born Bowl, the official beer of boxing. Chevez, win the right way. Cafe Agave, the adult coffee creamer. Fred Loya Insurance, put Fred Loya in your corner. M150 Energy Drink and Canelo versus Triple G live on pay-per-view and closed circuit Saturday, September 16th. This contest sanctioned by the California State Athletic Commission and the World Boxing Organization. WBO President Francisco Paco Parcarcel, Supervisor Richard DeCure. The three judges scoring the bout will be Larry Hazard Jr., Fernando Villarreal, and Zach Young. And inside the ring, in charge of the action at the bell, World Championship veteran referee, Dr. Lou Moret. And now, 12 rounds of boxing for the WBO Super Flyweight Championship of the World. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing red and officially weighing in at 113.8 pounds. His professional record, 17 victories, including nine wins by knockout, only one defeat with two draws. From Cleveland, Ohio, USA, the challenger, the reigning NABO super flyweight champion, Antonio Carita Nieves. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the red corner, wearing black with yellow, and officially weighing in at 115 pounds. His professional record, a perfect one, 13 fights. 13 victories, including 11 wins by knockout from Zana, Karamangara, Japan, the WBC, light flyweight, champion of the world, the defending and defending undefeated WBO, super flyweight, champion of the world, Neoya Monster in I gave you instructions, Justin, and just have a good, clean fight. Listen to my command. You take yourself all the time. Good luck. From Inouye's maybe third pro fight, it was obvious he was going to get to the top of at least one division. He's already been to the top of two. The question was, could he make his introduction to a world, an American and worldwide fight Martin. population before Martin. Chocolatito was no longer on top? Could he get there? while Chocolatito was still a top fighter. And that's what tonight is about. Here is the introduction to the monster. And he's called the monster, Andre, because of his knockout power and the 11 knockouts in 13 fights. But according to CompuBox, he lands more jabs, excuse me, he throws more jabs than any other top fighter in the world and lands the second most per round of any top fighter in the world, exceeded only by Gennady Golovkin. And that, of course, underlines the fact that power is often set up by the jab. Absolutely. I think he hides the power behind the jab, like you just mentioned, so that's definitely an asset. Landed a right hand to begin the fight. Behind the jab on a classic one-two. There's the classic one-two again. He says his best punch is his left hook. He hasn't unfurled that one quite yet. Just missed with one. But you can see that it's quick. Nieb is quite aware that he's up against a guy who's regarded as a monstrous talent. He said, of course, exactly what he's supposed to say. That represents a great opportunity for me. The boxing world has their eyes peeled right now on this fight. Because Inoue, those who have seen him and followed him, have been saying such glowing things. This being his American TV debut. People want to see what they have here. And already we've seen one thing that some fighters wait a long time to learn. His reputation is a great jabber. Davis is aware of the jab. So a couple of times, you know, he leaves with the left hook. You can see early that his father taught him well. He's fundamentally sound. And that power he has behind those fundamentals don't hurt at all. 
And Nieves is here with a game plan. You can see he has an idea of what he wants to do in there, which is he wants to punch when uh, the monster, when Inoue, doesn't want him to punch. He's trying to time him in between. Whenever Inoue takes a little break, he's trying to get in there, and he's trying to also punch with Inoue. Nieves is definitely there mentally. Like you said, Jim, saying all the right things. I just don't know if he can translate that physically. Tries to deliver the body. You know, he did a great job of blocking it with his left elbow. Comes back with a series of punches of his own. Uh, in no way, he tries to set his stuff up. And Nieves faints and faints. And again by Nieves. Right, tries to punch with in a way to get his shot in there first. So Nieves has already announced, announced his presence in the ring with one good hard counter left hand shot that landed on Inoue's face. And this is where Inoue has had his way so far, so he has to make him uncomfortable. Body shot by Inoue. Love the way he extends the jab. And in round one, now he in a way appears to be everything that we were told he would be. Very nice, very nice. He agreed. It's very nice. The left is great. You're giving him a lot of pressure. He's doing pretty good. Throw some bodies in there. You can get some lefts in there. And then come back with a, okay, up, okay. a right uppercut. If you use the double and he goes into that gap like we've been seeing him go into it, let's go ahead and go with the Virgil Hill once or twice. And then let's fill that gap with the right hand on top and the hook. Okay? You're doing fine. You're doing fine. Okay? Keeping your hands up just like you're supposed to. Alright? Beautiful job. So let's go with the Virgil Hill once or twice. What is the Virgil Hill, Andre? I have to ask him. I don't know. <laughs> Nieves has an idea of what he's trying to do. Faint, there's a faint. In a way, he wants to wait a little bit to punch sometimes. Punch in between when he's waiting. Or, you're wait for, or he's waiting for Nieves to punch and punching with him to land his own shot. Good one, two, bye, Inoue. The danger of punching with a puncher is obviously you can get caught with the same shot. Good shot from Nieves. The right hand by Nieves to the body, and he followed up with a looping right hand upstairs. Well, it's not a good idea to punch with a guy unless he's punching wide, and at times, Inoue has been a little bit wide. But you can see the force that Inoue throws with, the power is obvious. Inoue has never been knocked down, technically, all the, he did take a knee in an amateur fight, so he has had one knockdown scored against him, although he says it wasn't because of a punch. Now Inoue sticking the jab, that's his game. Bobber asked for body shots. Haven't seen a body shot yet from Inoue in this round. Now he goes downstairs and comes back up and fires the left hook to the body with the floor. Vicious left hand to the body from Inoue. He's a 115 pounder, boy. He's going with the force. You can hear those shots from Ring's house. <laughs> These guys are so small, you go, boy, he hits like a lightweight. And <laughs> that's a compliment. <laughs> I think at the end of the day, if there was one thing that won the first fight for Juan Francisco Estrada, it was having his feet flat on the canvas and maximizing the power in his punches in the second half of the fight. Yeah, he was always in position to punch. He was never out of position. And that's the same thing you see with Inouye right now. He's always in position to punch, regardless of what his opponent tries to do. And I think he bothered Nieves with that hard right hand off the jab. Nieves trying to come back with some body shots. Inouye just standing in, looking, waiting, and he launches again. When one guy is coming up from below the flyweight today, and the other guy is coming down from 122 pounds. You know, the, 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 the guy coming up is fighting a naturally larger man normally. And yet this is a responsible defensive fighter. And given those circumstances, the question here is, can Inouye impose his overwhelming offense anyway? Right hand by Inouye drives Nieves back just a little bit. Left hand to the body. Placement rather than power. Now combinations. 
Ziggler in front of the bell. You know, I heard the, the 10 second warning clap in front of the bell. That saved me, Edgar's right there. The official timekeeper here, Tiffany Clinton, is extremely demonstrative the way she claps the sticks with 10 seconds to go on the round. That isn't the first time that we've seen somebody in the ring misapprehend that signal and believe that the round must be over. She makes a lot of noise when she does it. It's good, it's very professional, but Pat Russell stopped a fight between Tim Bradley and Jesse Vargas when he heard that sound and thought that the round was over. Tiffany's doing a job right. Everyone needs to hear the clap. Other people have to adjust to her. Jack Latito getting gloved up for the main event against Teresa Ketsolorung Bisa, whose real name is Wisaxil Wongak. But that's a long story about Thailand and family names and a year, a hundred years of history, etc., etc. A long name and a longer story. Bottom line is he fights here as Teresa Ketsolorung Bisa, but if you ask him for driver's license back in Bangkok, it would say we cap seal one guy. Round three of a schedule 12. You can see that Harold Letterman, unofficially, not surprisingly, has now in a way winning the first two rounds. Airway is trying to pick up where he left off. He knows he had was hurt in that last round, and he wants to test him to see how hurt he still is. You see why he's called a monster. When a guy has fast hands, a good jab, and real punching power, and then he energetically applies all those things, it's, it's a nightmare for the opponent. He just did something you occasionally see Gennady Golovkin do. He saw the target and adjusted the arc of the punch as it was traveling through the air to give it a little bit lift over the top and get it down to the face. Now there's a perfect uppercut by Inouye. I don't think it's going to matter tonight, Andre, but Inouye's defense is not unique to this fight. That's what he does. He pulls straight back from punches sometimes. He uses athletic ability to avoid punches and doesn't always use kind of classic technical defense. You think that'll be a problem against the next level? Uh, it remains to be seen. In a way, he's only 24 years old, so his reflexes are at their, their very height right now. That will be a problem down the stretch if he continues to fight in his early to mid-30s. He'll have to make those adjustments and modify his style. A lot of time between now and then, though. <laughs> We're talking a lot about the power of Inoue, but as you mentioned earlier in the broadcast, it's the jab that's separating Inoue from his opponent tonight and his opponents previous to this night. He has an Ike Corte-like jab, very piston-like. The bazooka, Ike Corte. It's a heavy jab, meaning he, his weight comes out over his front foot when he throws it. Oh, and it sets up power shots like that which are discouraging to Nieves. Well, you can happen toward, toward the end of the last round, and you can see Nieves' confidence just go down a little bit as Inoue so easily landed combination after combination. So listen, when you're getting hit with those kind of shots, sometimes the game plan can go out the window quick. All of a sudden, it doesn't... Yeah, excuse me, Jim. All of a sudden, it doesn't become worth it to extend yourself and try to implement that game plan when you're getting hit heavy with heavy shots to the head and the body like Nieves is right now. Right, and part of the key to his ability to do that is balance and timing. He seems to always to be in the right position on his feet and he throws when he wants to. He's not necessarily a combination puncher, he's a pick -em type puncher. He'll throw a jab, he'll throw a lead right hand, then he'll throw a two or three punch combination. He's steady, but he's a pick -em type puncher, not necessarily a combination. He'll respond to an opportunity. If you leave your right. open on the left side, he'll fire a right hand, even if it wasn't his plan to do so. Absolutely. He's a pick -em type puncher until he gets his guy hurt, and then he throws in combination. I like that. Opportunistic, Jim, as you said. This is just a brilliant round. This this was a one-sided pile driving round for now in a way. Immediately following live boxing here on HBO, stick around for the premiere of the second episode of our two-part 24-7 Canelo Golovkin. Then next Saturday night on September 16, HBO pay-per-view brings you the hugely anticipated live fight between Canelo Alvarez and Gennady Golovkin, two of the sport's brightest stars, fighting for middleweight supremacy. Finally, after years of waiting, and on September 23 on World Championship Boxing, Jorge Linares defends his 135-pound title belt against Luke Campbell. And go to the angles, get off first. Okay. Now, every time you hit this kid and you turn, you're getting some good stuff off. But you can't stop, man. You got to keep it going. Okay. All right? Let's see if we can't work that double and get, get him to get those hands up and we go to that body. But stay low. Trainer's willing and the trainer believes. I'm not sure the look in the Ebis' eyes was an indicator that he believes yeah, at this point. The trainer's not getting hit. 
Harold Letterman, how do you have it through three unofficially? Okay, so you made it three to nothing, 30 to 27, Naomi Inouye. You, you know, Jimmy, it's amazing his accuracy. Uh, I'm talking about Inouye, when he throws a punch, man, he don't miss. Uh, very, very quick left jab, uh, very, very accurate left jab. His, his straight right hand is extremely accurate. It, it's amazing. The guy's got terrific uh, accuracy. See that? I mean, he almost just got his hands held up by, uh, and in a way, still gets that jab through. Uh, really amazing job he's doing. Really nothing in a way. I, I, that, the trainer has an unenviable task because what's impressive about in a way is here he is against a competent, responsible fighter who's not really doing anything glaringly wrong, and yet it's coming out wrong because of what Inouye's doing. What's the trainer supposed to tell him? You want to throw in the towel already? It's not time yet, right? He's telling him to basically stick with the game plan, but the game plan's not working, but come up with a better one right now. I mean, the trainer's doing what he can do. He, he can only do as much as his fighter will allow him to do. But I think he does, even though it's only the fourth round out of 12, he does need to keep a close eye on the Eves. The Eves is a tough kid, but he is taking a lot of punishment right yes. now, and it's starting to sink in. What I mean is the trainer was talking as though his fighter has a chance, as though he's not taking a beating. But I don't know what his options are as a trainer in that. What would you want to hear in the corner there, Andre? I hope I'm not in that position because <laughs> when you're in the position that the Eves is in, again, it's just really, really tough. Do you go technical or do you, apply, or do you appeal to his heart? Do you motivate him? And Ron Ron is a tough and unenviable position like you just mentioned to be in. Well, win or lose, it's a big week in one way for the Evans. He works at a PNC bank full-time uh, in Cleveland. And this week, he was profiled in the Wall Street Journal. And the CEO of the banking company made clear that he's aware of the kid and knows that he's fighting. That can't hurt him as his banking career goes forward. And he said, I'm never going to give up my day job. Boxing is big. It's a big part of my life. But I've got an opportunity to do something in banking, and I'm definitely going to stick with it. He's got a backup plan. Yeah, and, and by the way, he's having a much better round this round. Well, in a way, uh, anyway, it seemed to me took the first minute of this round off to allow Nieves to throw some punches and let his clock wind down a little bit. Yeah, I think that was by design. I don't know if Inouye was resting or if he was trying to let the, the punishment from the previous round sink in a little bit, but I think he's doing what he wants to do right now. I, I think he was trying to lure Nieves into an exchange where he wouldn't have to try to open Nieves' defense. He could just, you know, catch him with in an exchange. Oh, what a hook he could open some defense with a left hook to the body like that. And by the way, I mentioned that Happy Box has him throwing more jabs per round than any other top fighter in the sport. An average of 37 coming in. He's throwing 41 jabs per round here tonight. We've seen so many of them over the years, and some of them have been among uh, the, the sport's most famous duos, including, of course, Felix Trinidad and his son. There are emotional implications when the father is training the son. Do you like it, or would you have stayed away from it? I mean, ideally, I think it's a great thing, but I think from what I've seen, they either work extremely well or they implode right before us. It's one or the other. I haven't seen much in between. I think that's a great point. I think in a way it has to put Nevis away here in this round or next because it's a lopsided fight but in the middle of this very energetic card where we saw a terrific first fight and we're expecting a, a tremendous rematch in the main event this is his American TV debut we all know he's good what people want to see is if he can capture their imagination and really look devastating make some water cooler buzz the next you know on Monday at work and if he scores a knockout here pretty soon, maybe he can do that. 
But what, what I don't think in a way what's good for him here in terms of the business of his career is just a kind of sameness to every round and an extended fight. And now in round five, it looks like Nieves is trying to find somewhere to hide in the ring, and he can't find it. As Inouye continues to track him down, pin him against the ropes, and pound him with power shots. Nieves trying to slip away to the side, slip away to the side, and Inouye just keeps walking him down, gets him in the position there where he can face him, and lands a body shot on the door. One or two more of those, he could end this fight, Jim. Andre, this is what you did against Kovalev. When you saw that, you went right there. And here, Inouye has him ready to go to the body. Yep, there it is. First time down as a pro for Nieves. First time in the ring with a fighter like now he ain't Inouye. So why throw anything other than a left hook to the body if you're Inouye? Exactly. Fight the hands in the body right now. He'll protect the head, but the body can't move. 54 seconds to go in the round. In a way, stalking. There it is. Another body body shot with the left hook. That one hurt the others as well. Right back. But I literally don't think you should throw another punch other than a hook to the body. And there's another one. one and there's one another one. one. Uh, the others lands a right hand, but not with enough authority to change anything. Another left hook to the body. In a way, listening to what Max Kellerman and Andre Ward say. Another left hook to the body. Another left hook to the body. In a way, trying to finish the fight with exactly the prescription offered by our expert commentators. Yet another sledgehammer, left hook to the body. Most effective punch in boxing. I don't care who you are, who you're fighting, where you've been brought up. Learn to throw the left hook to the body. It will win you more fights than any other weapon. He did not a win by stoppage, but he's only throwing one hook at a time. And what Andre did against Kovalev was three, four, five at a time. Well, Kovalev stood still for him. That's true. <laughs> Breathe deep. Spit this one out. It's way to protect yourself. Now listen here. You ain't gonna have to worry about the referee stopping. I'll stop it. Believe me. Now, listen to me. We know that we have an opportunity now. What I want you to do is, I want you to keep that tight guard. Inouye's been landing beautiful body shots all night. Here we see another left that lands right by the solar plex. Nieves hesitates and then decides to take a knee. You hear the trainer in the corner talking to Nieves. Maybe you could land some miracle right hand, but I don't see the point in this contest continuing because it's not a contest anymore. We're just waiting for the final hook to the body to end things. I don't know what's the point after that last round. Bernard Hopkins against Oscar De La Hoya, Arturo Gatti against Leonard Doreen. How many times have you seen it? You land that left hook in the perfect spot to the body. Andre Ward against Sergey Kovalev. The legs go numb beneath the waist. The will goes away. The knockout comes. But, but Inouye knows he has wounded prey in front of him. So he's going to continue to throw that left hook to the body. And it's a damaging, damaging thing to do. Like, how, why does he need to keep taking those? This is where you see a little bit of inexperience from Inouye only having 13 fights. A good right hand right there from Inouye where he's not mixing up the attack. He's not hiding the fact that he wants to throw that left to the body. So Nieves has enough experience where he can guard against that shot. He's got to switch it up, throw a right to the body, maybe a right to the head, and then a left hook to the body, and it'll be wide open. That's what he did. He threw the right to the body, and there's, well, Nieves, Nieves looked at him like, wait a minute, you're allowed to see that left hook to the body. Listen to the sound when the left hand body shots land. That is a thud. You can hear that all over the arena here at the Stub Hub Center in Carson. I mean, I, I just think that's enough. I, I know he's not dazed in a way like he's a but why does he need to keep taking this punishment canelo yeah. alvarez against shane mosley over and over and over the sledgehammer left to the body you can see nieves is keeping that right hand glued to his side right there that's why you got to switch it up if you want that shot you got to go away and then come back to it and with the chance to put on a show now anyway is doing so as he lifts his hands to let the american audience know yes i'm a star i know i'm a star you're going to see big things from me in the ring. Come to me. Come to me. I'm ready for the knockout right now. The referee has to get, keep a close look on the Evers in a minute. He may have to save him from himself. Yeah, this corner said, hey, I'll stop it if it gets to. No, he's not. You need to stop it now. Do you need to see your guy unable to rise from the canvas? The contest is over. It's not a contest anymore. 
The others came in with a record of 17-1-2. His first loss in the last fight was a decision with which he disagreed. He is getting hammered here by a superior talent. Okay. Come on, show me something. The talent you don't see all that often. Yevez has had enough. To the layman, it looks like he's still in the fight, but if you know what you're looking at, he's had enough. There's a lot of punishment that is soaked in, not just to the body, but also to the head, and it's only going to get worse as this fight progresses. Big right hand to the body. Put in a way right. A vicious shot. Did Nieves need the last 60 punches that landed? The nose is bleeding now, and who knows what's going on internally in his ribcage. Another left of the body to finish the round, and Nieves staggers back to his corner, where trainer Joseph Delguide has a decision to make, and he has made the decision. So it'll be a technical knockout at the end of round six. For now, you know it. His 12th knockout in 14 fights. And we were told to expect something special. That was quite a show. Yeah, this corner stopped it. That's good. A lot of corners would have let the guy go out again. I wish he would have stopped it around earlier. In a way, is not a perfect fighter. You can see some defensive vulnerabilities. You can see, as Andre mentioned, even some offensive inexperience. But it's going to take a hell of a fighter to stop this guy. Does he have an X-Factor? He's got several X-Factors, as far as I'm concerned. He's got skill, he's got ability, he's got, he definitely has some nuances. He's been taught well. And above all else, I love the jab. So now you're in a states his case. In between Juan Francisco Estrada's thrilling one-point decision victory in the first fight over Carlos Cuadras, and whatever Teresa Ketsorum Bisai and Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez will produce in the main event in their rematch of what was, when it took place, a very strong fight of the year candidate. Now let's go to Michael Buffer for the official particulars. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Dr. Lou Moret, after the indication from the corner of the challenger, has to call a halt to the contest. The official time is the end of round six. The rule by the referee, a T a KO. The winner and still undefeated and still the reigning and defending WBO Super Flyweight Champion of the World, Naoya Monster Inoue. Thanks for watching and remember to subscribe our channel.